what's up y'all so we're breaking my stuff so you don't have to but just as a disclaimer y'all this is done by professional redneck engineering in america all right you can screw up your engine really easily <laughs> so i advise you not to do this all right this is like uh you know redneck tech 101 what's up y'all so we're breaking my stuff so you don't have to as always so you know i drive my beat up old boat and my old yamaha and it's great it's lasted a long time but i went and ahead and i started to replace some plugs the other day and uh, i got to this bottom cylinder and this is the lowest cylinder on the engine and every time on yamaha's you know this is this is one of the old school problems with the yamaha is this lower cylinder gets water in it i filled it with oil last night and i got some pictures i'll show you of the plug here um, but this plug has rust on it, which means there's water in this lower cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a compression test. And this is how you're going to do a compression test. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go up there and there's a lanyard attached to a kill switch. We're going to disconnect that kill switch to hopefully disconnect spark. Not all engines have that. Not all engines work that way. Sometimes you got to disconnect the fuel pumps, disconnect fuel so there's no fuel going back here. You don't want something to blow up. You got to be very careful because you still have a spark plug and you still have fuel and if you have spark you could blow yourself up to set your boat on fire and everything else so it's very important to be very careful it always pays to disconnect fuel and at the very least disconnect spark um you got to really look at your boat and your engine and how it's set up but you got to be very careful to do this if you don't know how to do it hire a professional <laughs> so it's one of those moments and you should say maybe i shouldn't do this myself but you know i love living on the edge so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to do a compression test so first thing we're gonna do is Bill's gonna hop up in the boat. We're gonna disconnect the lanyard, which is gonna kill spark to this engine. And then I got a compression tester and we're gonna check compression on the cylinder. And then we gotta find out how the water got into the cylinder. More than likely the water passage on these water jackets and heads rotted through and some water got into that cylinder. So, all right, here we go. It's breaking our stuff so you don't have to. Check it out. All right, y'all. So what I've done is I've went along and I uh, put my, uh, my spark plug wrench on here and I popped them all loose. They're really tight. You got to hold it in straight and give it a little tap to pop it loose. You don't want to share these plugs off in the head. You got to be very careful. You don't want to break the ceramics on them. But I went around and I loosened up all the plugs, um, all cylinders of the engine, because we're going to go cylinder by cylinder and we're going to check the spark. And as we check the spark, I brought a Sharpie. The reason I brought a Sharpie is I'm going to write on every cylinder head every cylinder what what the compression is so we can check spec on every cylinder and make sure it's in proper parameters all right so the next thing we're going to do is i got a cheap compression tester nothing fancy you can buy them at a hardware store anywhere and i'm gonna mark i'm gonna match up my uh, spark plug size to my compression fitting okay so we got the right spark plug size and compression fitting i'm um, gonna set my compression tester up Super simple, just got a quick disconnect on this side. All right, you just snap them together. They're all similar. Um, push it down in, push it up. Make sure you got the fitting on here. There's an O-ring on these fittings. Make sure that, oh, there's a, that it is, a, make sure the O-ring is compressed correctly so you don't wanna have any leaks. You know, if you got a leak in this, you're not gonna get correct compression. So let's go ahead and start with the worst cylinder. I actually put oil in it when I found this out. So Bill, let's turn this over a little bit and see if we can blow out some of that oil before I do this, because I wanna have as dry as a cylinder as I can for my first check. Uh, if you have oil in there, it'll, uh, it'll give you a false reading. And that's how people sell blown up engines is they will fill the cylinders full of uh, oil and it'll it'll actually give the engine compression and that's how when you go to do a compression test on an engine for a shady person selling it that they pass them off for you to buy an engine and think it has good depression <laughs> good compression when in fact it's worn and the rings aren't making compression so anyway go ahead and turn it over let's blow some of this oil out of here is it neutral there you go okay, good that's it just a couple times each all right now we're going to go in here and i'm gonna actually it's actually easier to screw this in if you do it this way first before you connect it <clears throat> and we are going to put this in there and tighten it down in. you got to get a good seal tight and we're gonna do this a couple times just to verify um, also when you're doing this never have the glass of the compression tester at your face 
Uh, there's actually been a lot of instances where these have blown up and hit people. So be careful, always point it away from you. Go ahead, Bill, go ahead, let's do a compression. I always look at it from an angle. There you go. Yeah, go ahead, turn over three, four, five. <laughs> That's not bad. We're at 95, 100 pounds compression. That, that's not horrible. So that cylinder is not gone. Uh, let's go ahead and mark it. I'm going to say 95 just to be safe. And then we're going to go right up and we're going to test all these. So you release the pressure. Okay. And you know, that could be a false reading because I did put oil in there. So, you know, and, and, and I, I got to be a little more specific about that. So it's not necessarily a false reading, but the thing is, is that that oil will give, uh, it'll fill the grooves and provide better compression for that cylinder. And then now if you have an engine that's been sitting for a long time and it hasn't been run, um, you know, that could also have a bad reading and the engine just needs to be run and then it'll show a proper compression. Chris, um, this engine runs all the time. Huh? Right, so is it proper to do the compression check on a cold engine? Uh, yeah, cold engines are fine. Cold engines are fine to do compression. Um, if engines sit for a long time, a lot of the <clears throat> fluids that are in the engine, the oil, the residual in the cylinder will drain down, uh, temperature causes the metal to contract. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's good to run an engine, uh, it'll give a better reading. Um, but, you know, I like to have comparative readings of a dry, cold engine. And then if it's got, you know, I've had engines that have sat that I've run them, or I put um, oil in them and it allows the, it's like ring free because the rings get stuck and then, you know, sometimes they bust out. You can get a bad reading that way. And then, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of variables and that's why it pays to have a professional that knows all these variables that can explain them to you. So like when you go out and buy a boat, you gotta have a boat surveyor that understands all these variances. And something as simple as just doing a compression test. So just be very careful, methodical and read up so you understand what's going on on a cold engine, a hot engine, an engine that had oil in it, an engine that may have bad rings and what the different readings mean. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna go to the next cylinder. <clears throat> I'm just going to go one by one and then I'm going to go back and test that bottom cylinder again. Uh, see where we're at but right now. We're going to keep going up here to the next cylinder and we're going to do all the cylinders. All right. Screw it in tight. Make sure it's in there good. You want a good seal. All right, Bill, go ahead. Good. Now that one's about that's like right at 100. Um, so what telling me is, man, that, that cylinder still got good compression and I'm, I'm gonna check them all, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna say this one's 100. And you know, you gotta realize this engine probably has, jeez, <laughs> thousands of hours on it. I mean, I, I run my stuff. So, you know, that's amazing. The compression's so good. So, bring the next one. Oh, I need my wrench, filter. I mean, not my filter wrench, my spark plug wrench here. It really is. It's very amazing. The quality of the old Yamahas are just amazing engines. You know, I was talking about buying a new engine last night. And I'm like, man, they don't even build them as good as they used to. I mean, they're great, but man, the reliability of an old Yamaha, something you just don't come across. All right, Mr. Bill, go ahead. I'll let you guys see it. Oh, hold on, hold on, Bill. Yep. I didn't release pressure, got it. Here we go. Good, right there, right around 100 again, it's perfect. All right, let's go to the other side here. Oh, you can't see as well over here, but I'm here. You know, what I'll do is I'll go look at the specs for this engine and see what the compression is supposed to be. But, um, you know, you just want that they're in a range of each other where they're supposed to be. And 95 to 100 is, is in range, so that's good. So I may be able to just go ahead and rip the cylinder head off of here, put a new gasket and a new head or something, and this engine may be back in business, which would be great. All right, Bill, go ahead. Release the pressure. Here we go. Oh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, go ahead. We're right at 100 again. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
I always carry, carry a pair of pliers or channel locks. My adapter sometimes gets stuck in the cylinder here. I gotta, because I tighten them in sometimes a little too tight. Just trying to make a good seal. It's got a bust -up. Oh, you know, and I'm stupid. And a, a reason, <laughs> a reason my adapter is getting stuck in the cylinders too is I'm forgetting to release the pressure. If I try to unscrew my adapter before I release the pressure, then the adapter gets stuck in the cylinder. It's just me being stupid. All right, so let's go ahead and check the cylinder. Go ahead, Mr. Bill. Good, good. And uh, again, that's it. That is at a hundred. So we're gonna go ahead and mark it. It's like right there, yeah, 100. So this was a hundred. This one's a hundred. Okay, and we're down to the last cylinder, guys, and we have completed our compression test. And then after that, the next video will be on ripping this head apart. See what is wrong. I'm gonna remove this last plug, which are all followed out. That's what I was doing was I, uh, so you relieve the pressure, and then you can back out your fitting. <laughs> Sometimes that pressure just gets it stuck in there. But always keep a pair of pliers to get it out. And then the last cylinder up top here, I know it's getting noisy out here. Everybody's doing stuff in the neighborhood. They're being noisy, they're being noisy. And again, you make sure you have your spark killed because I don't know if you saw, there's a little fuel popping out of these cylinders now because I didn't connect, disconnect fuel. And uh, <laughs> you don't need that fuel igniting. So always make sure you've killed spark. Maybe you gotta kill a fuse, whatever. Anyway, last cylinder, let's see where we're at. Go ahead, Mr. Bell. And then we're gonna check. Awesome, that one's even got a little higher compression. Um, and then we're gonna recheck that bottom cylinder one more time. Now that it's got a little fuel and oil in there, it may actually come up to 100, which means there's some wear in the cylinder, and you know, it's part of life. But if it's still within uh, compression spec, then we can definitely move forward. Once we pull that cylinder head off, we'll see if there's pitting or scoring in that cylinder. Hopefully we caught the uh, water leak uh, quick enough, so. This one's actually got like almost 110. That was pretty good. All right, let's go back. But it's got a lot of fluid in it now too that may be contributing to the higher compression because once you get a little liquid in the cylinder, it'll it'll give a higher compression read. Like this one right now, probably will come up to 100 simply because we've uh, been doing what we've been doing. Anyway, let's see if we can get this in there. Don't cross thread it. Very important. Don't screw it up. And then make sure your compression tester has a good seal. All right. Here we go. Hmm. All right, mind the lawnmower, but one more compression test and we're calling this a job and we are on to the next video. Go. go ahead, Mr. Bill. And now, just like I said, I don't know if you can see this, but it's, it's over, uh, it's at 100 or over because of the liquid that has went into the cylinder, the fuel oil mixture. Um, the, the cylinder, whether the rings have released or the grooves have been filled in the cylinder, we actually have perfect compression. It's just at 100 or over, which is very encouraging for this old engine to still have a little more life in it without rebuilding the whole engine. So our next step is gonna to be to pull these heads off and find this water leak, all right? So that'll be another video. Thanks for stopping by. Like and subscribe to Chef Outdoors. You know we do cooking, we do hunting, we do diving, we do mechanics and camping and so much more. Like and subscribe to Chef Outdoors.